Hello, everybody. What the flick? What the fright? My should name I, is. Should I rev the chainsaw again? Sure, let's do it. Yeah. You want to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never get tired of that thing. Uh, I have, as you can see from last from yesterday, I brought my stuff from home to make this mm. more more of a fun horror environment. Uh, and I've also brought Pla from plastic home plastic chainsaws. Do that. I've also brought from home Whitney Seibold, my co-host, uncancelled too soon. He let me come along. Yeah, he's great. And uh, we're going to talk about we've talked about <coughs> so far on what the fright, where we're looking at some of the best horror movies of the century so far. Uh, we've talked about some classy movies. We've talked about The Witch. We've talked about The Babadook. We've talked about the relatively subtle uh, paranormal activity. Now let's talk about something schlocky as hell. Let's talk about the pretty damn fantastic Freddy vs. Jason. <laughs> Uh, in a lot of ways, Freddy vs. Jason was like the crown jewel of 80s schlock, only it came out like maybe 15 years too late. Yeah. Uh, this was a fight people were talking about all throughout the 80s. Freddy Krueger vs. Jason Voorhees from Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th, respectively. Let's get them in the same movie. It took until 2003, but they finally did it, and it was pretty darn good, actually. It, it, it lived up to expectations. <laughs> Let's take a look. Welcome to my nightmare. Why won't you die? Go so, it's interesting because slasher movies dominated the horror landscape throughout the 80s. They were just the, the norm. Uh, Halloween was sort of the first big hit. It wasn't necessarily the first slasher. Mm -hmm. uh, Friday the 13th came out in 80, and yeah. uh, Nightmare on Elm Street came out in 84. And then we had some of the sub, uh, uh, like the sort of the B-level slashers like mm. Child's Play, and some would argue but, the Hellraiser movies count, but that, they just have a boogeyman. They're not slashers. They're not really slashers. Yeah. But yeah, the, the uh, supernatural killer stalking teenagers in a remote location. Mm. Or uh, questionably or, supernatural anyway. Usually supernatural. If you include Zo zombies and dream warriors, Michael killing, Myers killing teenagers. Michael Myers, if you count the in, cult of Thorn, he counted in quick succession. Uh, yeah, those were uh, all we had throughout the 1980s. They kind of petered out in the late 80s, and by the early 90s, they were kind of dead. And then throughout mm -hmm. the 90s, it was a decade that horror didn't have much of a central identity. At least until Scream came along, but then we were in an irony stage. Yeah. And after Scream came along, they started looking at well, what do we have? Like, what, what franchises can mm. we bring back? And we got uh, the very irreverent Bride of Chucky, which is great, but came out in the 90s. We won't be focusing on that. And then the idea of Freddy versus Jason is as old as Jason Goes to Hell. When they, uh, when Freddy's... They, they kind of teased it at the yeah. very end of Jason Goes to Hell. Jason's Freddy's dead. glove pulls Jason's mask down to hell. <laughs> like, out of the ground and pulls Jason's mask. And the idea was that was supposed to lead to Freddy versus Jason. And indeed, that's why Jason X sent Jason Voorhees to space, was to get out of the way of Freddy versus Jason so that it wouldn't be a continuity so, problem. The, the screenwriters bent over backwards to put these two <laughs> in the same universe because one is a killer who lives out in the woods uh -huh. and one lives in your dreams. How do they meet? How do they meet? Well, and they came they, up with a pretty clever idea. Taking a notion out of New Nightmare, they tied Freddy into the, the idea that he ceases to exist if you stop telling his story. Mm hmm. If and you cease to be order, afraid of him. You cease to be afraid of him and he just doesn't exist. But well, he's still out there. It's kind of a subversion of what happened in New Nightmare. A okay. little bit. But he has to gain power by having his legend grow again. Mm -hmm. So he essentially frames Jason. Well, he <laughs> enlists Jason. He tricks Jason. He comes uh, to Jason in a dream mm -hmm. as Jason Voorhees' mom and sends him off. Yeah, Jason, who's like l sleeping in a pile of moss in the woods after yeah. who knows how many years. After being killed a million times. And <laughs> Freddy sends him off to Elm Street to kill people. And people are, mysteriously, name, yeah. people are mysteriously dying. And people start blaming Freddy Krueger. And now teenagers are hearing about Freddy Krueger and they're starting to dream about Freddy Krueger. But the problem is... Jason Voorhees won't stop killing, and he's he's stealing Freddy Krueger's kills. So now they hate each other. That is such a fun premise. It's a it's a fun premise. It's believable in Enough. that in that playground sort of way, in that sort of who would win in a fight sort of yeah. conversation. You're drunk at two a.m. at a Denny's, and all that's all this argument. movie really is is you're <laughs> you're in the seventh grade. You're having an argument about who would win in a fight. This is a dramatization of that conversation. Well, it's interesting because like, if they're in the dream world, Freddy would win. <laughs> but if they're in the real world, Jason would win. And so they have both of those things. They in really the movie. do. There's there's so many things I like about this movie. I think it's interesting. That this is kind of the last hurrah 
for both Jason and Freddy. Jason had a and, reboot and some, after this. Some might even say slashers in general. Maybe, like at least the old school slashers, because both Freddy and Jason were unsuccessfully rebooted after this, mm. and this was kind of their last canonical adventure. And this well, has... Arguably, but yeah. Arguably, but it has all the pieces that you want. If you're looking for a Friday the 13th movie, this is a Friday the 13th movie. If you're looking for a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, this is a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. It hits all the tropes. They find the connective tissue. They got Robert Englund to play Freddy, for uh, goodness yeah. sake. Yeah. And, and on top of that all, like, We've seen a lot of fan service in our movies, and it's more common lately in like the superhero genres. But you gotta remember that like when the Freddy vs. Jason came out, the idea of like famous characters meeting each other in a movie and fighting was rare. It happened. Mm. King Kong fought Godzilla, uh, Frankenstein fought the Wolfman, uh, but they always kind of saved it for the last couple of minutes. Mm. They kind of wasted our time. We wanted to see him fight. Here we have them interacting with each other, and then the last like half hour of the movie is just one the th knockdown slog. The third, the the final third of the film is just a fight, and there are human characters throughout this. The lead actress is played by Monica Kina, who's actually mm -hmm. a, a talented actress. Very good. But, um, Catherine they, Isabel they, has a small but very good role. She's one of my favorites. Those characters kind of set the story in motion. We see the, everything from their perspective because we can't necessarily live it through Freddy's eyes. We're mm -hmm. not. Supposed Supposed to sympathize with Freddy, even if we do. Yeah. Well, they find so, a way that because Freddy Krueger was a child murderer and Jason Voorhees was a child who became like a murderer because of trauma. Mm. They find they ultimately, I think, they decide that Jason is a little bit more sympathetic and he becomes the underdog hero, <laughs> which is weird because they're both <laughs> mass they also, murderers. They also point out that one died by fire and one died by water, which doesn't really necessarily well, pay off. It, but. It, it's better than finding out both their mother's names were Martha because there's <laughs> at least like because it's not a coincidence. There's like an elemental nature to mm. them, and they manage to find a way to tie that into defeating them both because. This is one of those whoever wins we lose kind of movies where like they have to get Freddy and Jason to fight each other just because whoever is left over, well, at least we only have to kill one of them. One of these They're still going to try to kill all, all of us. And, uh, and you know, the, those, the kids who are involved in all of this mm -hmm. don't really seem to understand that. It's like, we can just pit them against each other. There's still one left at the end of that <laughs> and they'll still murder you. Yeah. And they also just sort of... There may as well be, there's actually a shot of bleachers uh, in the final fight scene, and I honestly thought that the, the child characters, the young human characters, would get up on the bleachers and just watch the fight. <laughs> Go, yeah! Because that's exactly what we're here to see. <laughs> They kind of take a back seat, but you know, they do get involved. A lot of credit needs to go uh, to director Ronnie Yu here. He mm. also did Bride of Chucky, which is another really fun reverend movie. But he really has a good sense of what makes these movies entertaining. Mm. Not necessarily scary. There are a couple of good jump out of your seat moments, but it's not really about terrifying you anymore. He understands that this is kind of a fight movie. Mm. The, and that's kind of cool. I mean, this is a guy, he directed that Jet Li movie, Fearless. He's, he, he understands that sort of me mechanic. And he treats it like a superhero movie, but with supervillains. Mm. You know, this is like if you did a movie in which Doctor Doom fought Magneto. Like, that's, <laughs> this is that kind of movie. Well, that sounds like a cool movie. I want to see that movie. That's kind of what both of these series had become at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, early on, we're supposed to sympathize with the human characters and have them kill Freddy or Jason. By the time we get to like part three or four in both of those series, we don't care about the humans at all. We just want to see Freddy. Yeah, at we this just point, Freddy see is Jason. doing rap videos we're, with the fat boys. We're, like, we're cheering it's... for the bad guys. We're here to see them get resurrected, them commit murders, and them, then, uh, them ultimately getting killed at the end. Yeah. Just because that's the structure we need. They're our heroes. So we want to see them fight. We want to see them win. We they're anti-heroes. We want to cheer for them. Is my point. Yeah, there are anti-heroes. Yeah, though. let's let's they let's are be clear. anti -heroes. But I think this they is, don't do noble things. But I think what really makes this movie great is that you know it's hard to do a fan service movie. We've seen it a, a, a lot of Properly, times, and it's almost yeah. never successful. I mean, Lake Placid versus Anaconda. Lake Placid doesn't fight Anaconda until the last couple of minutes. It's really lame. Mm -hmm. Like this is just if you're a fan of Freddy movies. Jason movies, and a lot of horror fans are. They don't. Not all horror movies need to be like super respectable. Sometimes they can just be fun and violent <laughs> and crazy. If you're a fan of Freddy and you're a fan of Jason, everything is in here. They have lots of uh, uh, really detailed like references to earlier films, and mm. they find a way to like put Hypnosil in, make it a super important plot point. If you're a fan of uh, Nightmare Three, and they they really just made it the ultimate fan service movie. Like when it comes down to this gives you anything you could possibly want from this movie. You get it more from Freddy vs. Jason than even something like The Avengers, which mm. just so many characters, someone gets the short shrift. 
it's it's Easy. hard to balance it all. Freddy versus Jason, they balanced it, and it's yeah. fun. This one led to Alien versus Predator. I understand the oh, yeah. success of this film. Mm -hmm. Alien versus Predator has those two guys like in rubber suits rolling around on the floor. Yeah, this is. I think yeah, the only well, real only real solid example I, of this actually coming together in a solid, interesting way. Well, and still gives you everything you want. And you bring in a good point. Alien versus Predator. In both of those movies, the alien and the predator are not the protagonists. Right. It's always about the humans who get caught in the middle. Well, I don't care. Well, one's a mute creature with a crab on its face, and the other is just a cockroach. So what do you, what do, you do with that? You follow the mute creature with a crab on his face, because at least he has dignity, damn it. <laughs> the cockroach is just a cockroach. The cockroach is just a cockroach. Uh, what do you give on the uh, What the Flick scale? What do you give Freddy versus Jason? Uh, it's so much dang fun, but it's not necessarily a great film. So I can only give it maybe a 7.5 like in the top end. Oh, I'm going to be so much more generous. Than okay. I, I honestly think that it is possible to be a four-star, three-star movie. This is a four-star, three-star film. So I'm going to give sure. I'm going to give this like an eight point five, just okay. for pure entertainment value. And if you're a fan of this kind of horror movie, this is kind of the er example. This is the ultimate. I'm not going to fight you too much on this. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>